All right. Now, if I give you two functions here, f of x and g of x, first off, um, what do those two functions represent on a graph? Straight lines. Both of those represent straight lines. Last week, we talked about direct and indirect relationships based on the slopes of those lines. Both of these have a what kind of slope? Positive slope. So is it a direct or indirect relationship between the variables? It's a direct relationship. Very good. Okay. Mr. Grover asked me to cover that with y'all. So that's like one thing I can say. Done. Um, when we are composing functions, you're going to see it written one of two ways. It will either be written like this, which means that f is composed of g of x, or this, but they mean the same thing. Okay, it's two different ways of writing the same thing. In both cases, f is composed of g. And what that means is this. Okay, if you just look at the f of x function, in the past, if we said find f of 3, that meant to do what? Plug 3 in for x, correct? Well, now, if I say f of a function, that means that I'm going to plug this function in for x. So the way that we need to write it out before we can start simplifying is we start with the first function that's listed, which is the function of f, and we write it out, but instead of the letter x, we're going to leave parentheses, okay? So the first function is 2x minus 1, so 2 parentheses minus 1. Now into those parentheses, I'm going to place g of x, the entire function, which is... 5x plus 3. So you're plugging one into the other. And then you're going to simplify. Well, from here, it should be pretty simple. We've got to distribute the 2 and then add our like terms together. So when you put the g of x function into f of x, the result is 10x plus 5. Okay? <coughs> Now, if I had taken this and said, what's f composed of g of 3? The composition is still the same. The only difference is when you get to this very final step, you plug a 3 in for x and you evaluate. So that means when I get to this step right here, then it's 10 times 3 plus 5, which would be what? 35. 10 times 3 plus 5. I'm not sure where my uh, extend the page has gone. Oh, well. Okay. Now, do you think you're going to get the same answer if you flip the F and the G around? No, you're not. Let's do that real quick. Okay, that was F composed of G. Now we're going to do G, and I'm going to write it differently so you can get used to seeing it this way. But it means the same thing. G composed of F. Which function do you write out first? G, leaving parentheses where you see the X. Okay, that's my G function, 5X plus 3. Now, into the parentheses, I am going to put F of X, which is 2X minus 1. And then we simplify Distribute the 5 and add your like terms. Now, last time we said plug a 3 in for x, see what you get. We got 35. Now, plug a 3 in for x and see what you get. 
what do you get? 28. All right? Same two functions, same value for x, but two different answers depending on what order you compose. Composition of functions, really not difficult at all. It's just understanding which one goes inside the other. Kirsten, do you have a question? You just find it hard to see? Okay. All right. Here we have two functions again, f and g of x. I want you guys to first find... F composed of G. And see if you can write that out yourself. And once you find that, I want you to evaluate that function if x is equal to 10. Okay, this is what you should have plugged in when you distribute your 2, you get 2x squared plus 2x minus 1, and then if x is equal to 10, it's 2 times 10 squared plus 2 times 10 minus 1, which this is 200 plus 20 minus 1 or 219. If you didn't get 219, first check to make sure that your algebra was correct. And if your algebra was correct, then it may be your order of operations that is off. Here, we don't multiply 2 times 10, get 20, and then square. We take care of this exponent first. Yes? I don't get like how you put in this thing. Okay. Hmm. Trying to think how else I can explain it. Which right now I don't know a different way to explain it. So I'll just say it louder and maybe you'll understand, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we're evaluating functions, we're always taking the variable and plugging something in for that variable, okay? Well, when we say f composed of g, that means that we are taking this function and putting that whole function in place of that variable. So this function is all of this. And it is going to be substituted here in place of x. So this, is, this says 2x plus 1. Well, if this represents x, then I have 2x plus 1. Oh, so you put the g in place of x Exactly. I'm putting that entire function in place of x. Okay. Now let's flip it around and let's find g composed of f. Same two functions. That's true. 